Greetings, everyone. I'm Patrick Vizi uh, with NC State University. Today, we're going to be focusing in on iron uh, availability, uptake, and correction. So we really first need to start off with iron fertility considerations in terms of source. But first, iron is an essential micronutrient for plant growth. And with it being a micronutrient, it's needed in very small quantities. However, it can be deficient, which is very common, but we also have to be concerned with over-applying and being toxic to the plant. There are a wide variety of forms of iron that are available. Uh, oxides, which are not soluble and cannot be taken out by the plant. Think rust of iron oxides. Sucrates, which are semi-soluble, but they can't be taken up. Sulfates, which are very common. Think of an iron sulfate. They're soluble, but they can oxidize rapidly to where they wouldn't be plant available. And then chelates. They're soluble and they remain soluble longer. And these are kind of preferred for making iron drench applications or just supplying so that that plant will have longer availability. Then we need to look at iron availability impacted by the substrate pH. This is a very common problem, uh, especially here where we have low buffering capacity in North Carolina, where that pH starts to drop below uh, 5.2, down below 5. We start to see a large increase in iron availability. And for an iron uh, efficient crop, you may start to see problems with the toxicity occurring. So iron efficient crops such as Gerbera, Marigold, Pintus, and Zonal Geraniums, on that lower foliage like we're looking at here, you start to see that iron bronzing occurring. It's going to occur in that lower one third of the plant. It's where you'll see your problems. But on the other end of the spectrum, when we get high pH, above 6.5, we see a drop in iron availability. So we start to see iron uh, chlorosis, that upper foliage. It's only going to occur in that new growth. Uh, looking at this poinsettia, or this petunia here, we see that that lower foliage is nice and green and healthy. We're only seeing that chlorosis in the new growth, suggesting iron problems. Uh, causes for iron deficiency. High pH, maintaining a pH below 6.5 for iron inefficient crops is essential to preventing a lack of iron availability. Some of these non-efficient iron crops, such as calabacoa, dianthus, petunia, and pansy, we have to be very careful about that pH creeping too high, uh, such as in high alkalinity areas, that pH shift going upwards. Uh, shown here, we can see that progression occurring with that light intravenal chlorosis in the initial moderate, we start to see uh, entire leaf chlorosis. And then in the advanced stages, we see bleaching uh, entire white leaves occurring. So another cause for iron deficiency is overwatering. If that uh, media is continually saturated right above that uh, upper four to low five in terms of that watering scale, we can see a result in iron deficiency. But reducing that water and, or reducing the frequency of automatic irrigation you will see the plants green back up. Shown here is Gerbera, and these were some plants that had bad roots going in. That media was continually saturated. We saw iron deficiency occurring. However, when we brought them uh, out of where they were being automatically irrigated, and we let them dry down, and we watered them only as needed, you can see the plants really green back up, but you don't get color back in the affected foliage. So understanding matching your watering needs with that crop and your weather is very important. Also shown here on butterfly bush, uh, we had a very wet couple weeks and the automatic irrigation was still running. And this is where we started to see problems occurring. So matching it with the weather is also important. Root rock, lack of roots available results in limited iron availability to uptake. This is generally going to be a single plant amongst many. And when you look at the roots, you'll see that there's root rot occurring and that plant's just simply not able to take up the nutrients. So if it's across many plants, think uh, nutritional, but if it's only a single plant, think biotic, which is what's occurring here. Then we need to look at how do you determine if it's an iron problem? Uh, the simplest way for in-house is doing a pour through to determine the pH. You can also look at uh, foliar tissue analysis to confirm the diagnostics. If you're sampling for a deficiency, you're going to want to sample that upper portion of the plant where that deficiency is going to occur. If you're looking for a toxicity determining uh, which micronutrient is, you want to sample that lower foliage where that toxicity is going to occur. So matching diagnostics with the sampling location is very important to getting an accurate reading to diagnose the problem. And then ways to correct iron deficiency. 
You can use an iron drench if the pH levels are too high. Then uh, an iron chelate drench application can be made. Uh, there are a lot of op options, but generally five ounces and 100 gallons of water is going to be your going rate. Um, applying uh, a su substrate drench with sufficient volume to leach the pot to make sure it's completely saturated. And then rinsing that foliage immediately to prevent iron from lingering on the foliage, potentially resulting in burn. So in summary, kind of what did we learn today and some take home messages. Maintaining an optimal pH for problematic species to prevent iron deficiency or toxicity from occurring is important. Consider using chelated iron to prevent oxidation from occurring and to promote that plant's availability. And then promote, prevent overwatering from occurring by dialing back automatic irrigation with changes in weather and allow those crops to dry down between irrigations. And with that, we do have a lot of uh, egro diagnostics on there, such as the irony of overwatering and minding the mist. Um, there are a lot of good resources there. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time today.